Hi there, it's good to have today with me Glenn Cormack. Glenn is the senior pastor at New Life Church North Allison. Although not for so much longer, you're going to be leaving us soon, unfortunately. Um, what, 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 what are your plans? Do you want to briefly say that and then we'll get into the conversation? Uh, yeah, I, I turned 60 last year and uh, uh, we have several grandchildren on the way in Scotland and uh, I had a couple of weeks off at the start of this year just to uh, take a break, uh, but also uh, to pray as well. And, and during that time, it became really clear to Janet, my wife and I, that um, our time here was uh, coming to an end and uh, we'll be heading north at the end of June. So uh, please pray for a new life uh, as they look to the future. Uh, and also for me and Janet that um, we settle in back north and, uh, you know, for our next chapter in serving the Lord, uh, wherever and whatever that may be. Amen. Certainly, yes, that, that, that is something that we will encourage folks to be praying for. Um, and it's interesting you talk about taking time out to pray and God showing you uh, new things for you. And, and this is really what this conversation is about. So as a church over the last year and maybe when you've had particular times of prayer, what do you feel that God has been saying to you and maybe more widely to our Baptist family in the Northern Association? Yeah, I, I, I guess one thing would be not to be afraid of change uh, and to embrace that. Um, it's been a challenging year. But I, I think I've learned so much in it and I, I think the church is learning a lot from it too. Uh, and for me, one of the key things is just... Um, realizing that, you know, where we are, we've been dispersed, we've not had a choice, but actually um, it's very biblical, the church being dispersed uh, and, you know, just being in the neighborhood, uh, you know, and, and we've probably preached about that for a long time, but perhaps the structure and the form with how we've conducted church has maybe disabled that a bit and, uh, it, it's, it's just provided a, a circuit break, I think, for us in a good way to think, well, here we are in our communities. Uh, it's me at home now and it's me with my neighbour. Uh, I'm sure there's something in the Bible about that, about loving your neighbour uh, as yourself. And, you know, let's embrace uh, the situation we find ourselves and we've no other choice. Uh, and certainly we've, we've been thinking around that as a church and, and, and how we do that. For example, little things like uh, going for a walk with someone. Uh, it's been one of the only ways we've been able to meet with people um, face to face. But actually, that I found that a really positive thing. And, uh, you know, the simple act of walking with someone and uh, helps you process. Uh, and you can also pray as you go. Uh, and I found that a real blessing. It slowed me down. Uh, and it... Uh, and it's good discipleship. Jesus practiced it all the time. So, Glenn, it's uh, it's interesting to hear all that. And do you have a feeling for how church might be different uh, over the coming year or two as we as we start to come out of all the restrictions? What's God leading you towards? Um, certainly, as a church, we started to think about um, how we organise ourselves, and in terms of. Going forward, uh, we don't think uh, that the, the church will be gathered as a whole anytime soon. Um, certainly, initially, it seems to be the rule of six. And uh, there's, there's something positive in that as well. We think our, 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 our small groups, we call them life groups, uh, tend to have a kind of core of eight to 12 people. Um, but that's not possible for us to gather in that form at the moment it's the same for every church uh, and and so we're, we're just starting to pilot smaller groups uh, where we 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 put people into a uh, groups of six i uh, we don't see it as particularly leader led rather than just a group of christians meeting together to disciple one another and uh, we're, we're going to try out some of that uh, and maybe cluster those groups under an, an overseer uh, and, and look at ways of um, enabling discipleship to happen face-to-face. Uh, uh, -face. So that, that's certainly something we're going to try out uh, at New Life. 
And, and I guess uh, it should be pointed out that uh, New Life is our second largest church, so it, it's a lot harder to gather uh, <laughs> during this last year for you uh, than, than, say, for smaller churches who probably have, some of whom have been in their buildings, and some of our churches are a group of six even, and that's mm. a congregation. Um, but, well, uh, I mean, uh, that, that can work in any size yeah. of church, though, little groups that size, and uh, certainly the early church seemed to meet in, in homes and houses, and, and I'm sure they weren't that big, so I, I would imagine they, they were little small groups, little cells that uh, functioned and, and maybe they found different ways to gather. Yeah, I think sometimes the whole inherited structure we've got of buildings and, and the organisational life of church, um, it, 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 churches of, of all sizes adopt the same kind of thing. So even churches that really might be better off meeting as a small group in a home, uh, are still trying to manage buildings and services and all these kind of things. And I, I just wonder whether the pandemic might lead us to, I know some people are talking about this, to abandon our buildings and abandon our, uh, a lot of our structures that actually we don't need anymore. Anyway, that, that's, that's for people to decide. Yeah. Um, radical. It's, it's still, I think it's still good to gather. Uh, but I think uh, uh, in terms of the gathered and the dispersed, uh, there's a rebalancing going on towards dispersed and, and smaller groups. And I, I think uh, the neighbourhood's really significant uh, for me in our current situation and how we view our neighbours. Um, I've been reflecting on how Jesus operated. Uh, and it seems to me that he spent more time out of the synagogue than in it. And uh, he, he didn't have any rules about who was in and who was out because that's, that's what upset the religious leaders, that, that Jesus was uh, spending time hanging out with uh, people that they decided were on the outside. Uh, and Jesus, um, I think, prophetically engaged with these people uh, and just treated them as insiders. And they responded to that and came in to the fold. Uh, and they loved Jesus for that. And it, it strikes me, you know, well, why don't we do the same thing? You know, each of us hey, has moved into our house and our house has become the church. Hey, the place where you um, live is our church. Uh, so why not see yourself as the church in your street? Uh, and why not treat your neighbours as part of your congregation, whether they agree with that or not? But why not... Hey, prophetically just engage with them uh, uh, and invite them to be part of what you're doing and I think what we'll find is, is people will respond to that positively. Certainly that's one of the things we've seen going on in terms of people engaging with our online church. Uh, they, they've been, you know, we're throwing the doors open and, and people are coming through them and people that you know haven't had anything to do with church before and also uh, people that have previously left and decided actually here's an easy way back in. Thank you. And just to close, um, there's a picture that, that's been important to you as a as a church, an image that that you you wanted to maybe point us to as something that might be helpful. Uh, no, I would say I, I was I was in a Zoom meeting and I found myself doodling a lighthouse. Uh, and it was a lighthouse and it was on a rock and I wrote the name Jesus on the rock uh, and I sent it to one of our artists who's digitally produ produced the, the, the slide that Paul's going to show you. Uh, it's, it's by a guy called Chris Bambra uh, and the image is, uh, is a 360 degree beam from a lighthouse uh, and the lighthouse is standing on Jesus the rock and for me that brings two of the stories of Jesus that he teaches in the Sermon on the Mount, the, you know, building your house on the words and teachings of Jesus. Uh, but what if we thought of that house that we're building as a lighthouse? What if you thought about yourself in your street, uh, your home and your life as a lighthouse uh, and the impact that you have uh, can help people find direction in their lives too, and, and guide them towards Jesus. And all the while you're plugged in to Jesus. And, and that's why the image, uh, the words, uh, the lettering in the word Jesus is the same color as the beam, because we need Jesus to empower 
a witness, but it's a witness that is a, in every part of our lives, and just the way we conduct ourselves, but also the way we speak and the way we all get alongside people just like Jesus. You know, when Jesus um, met Zacchaeus, uh, everyone was surprised that Jesus wanted anything to do with him. But the key thing was that Jesus invited himself into Zacchaeus's home. Uh, and as a result, Zacchaeus realized that he too was a son of Abraham and he came to faith. But Jesus uh, took the initiative. And I think that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to take the initiative on our street and to go, go to people and, and simply engage with them and befriend them and help them. And when we get a chance, tell them about Jesus. Amen. Thank you very much, Glenn. Um, let's close with a prayer. And, you know, as you've been talking about the light in the lighthouse, I, I think it's not actually a coincidence that <laughs> shining through your window, bathing you in light. It's almost as if you've been <laughs> into glory. Um, and I think that's what we would like to pray for, for you and for new life during this time, that that light will shine ever more obviously and powerfully through you. So, Lord Jesus, and thank you that you are the light of the world, but you choose to let your light shine through your people, which is a privilege. And so, Lord God, may you enable Glenn and the leaders and the whole church of new life dispersed in many, many different places. And also when they gather to to be uh, ever more radiant and full of your presence and your power and your love, your grace, uh, your goodness so that those around will be impacted and touched by a God who is a wonderful, wonderful mm. and redeeming God. And Lord, we know that our communities need that at this time. We pray this for all our churches uh, as people come out of the restrictions with all the, the mental health challenges, employment challenges, poverty challenges, um, social challenges. Lord, people in our nation will need your light like never before. So will you use each of our churches? And we pray especially today for new life that you will do great things. And may you guess, bless and guide them uh, as Glenn moves on, help him and Janet to settle in, in their new home and to uh, enjoy this new life that you have for them. And we trust that as you're leading them away, uh, then that's also the right decision for the church and you will lead them into new places with new leadership. Please guide them forward on their journey too. We ask Jesus all these things in your powerful name. Amen. Amen. Amen.